Okay, I want to talk about. All right, I want to talk about my gyroscope here. Here's the frame. Uh, frame is made out of two chopsticks, some hobby plywood, some aluminum brackets that uh, leftover brackets that I'd used uh, to build my robotic arm, an acrylic ruler, and uh, the gyroscope itself is uh, a little. Uh, 170 uh, 6 volt motor uh, with a 2 millimeter shaft and uh, I made this uh, axle with uh, some probably one one and a half millimeter uh, steel uh, rods epoxied into a piece of acrylic ruler and this here is just a handle to make it easier to uh, control it when I'm setting it up and uh, oh, my wire is broken. Um, an adapter, a shaft adapter, and the shaft adapter is a little brass thing, and it's a two millimeter to four millimeter shaft on the uh, rotor. Now you see here when I'm spinning it, it's it's not very true. So there's some vibration in mine. If you can get a motor with a shaft and a rotor that has no vibration, you're not going to have any problem at all making a self-balancing gyroscope. Um, ideally, your rotor, uh, this rotor is about 5 centimeters in diameter. Uh, it's heavy though, it's 150 grams. Ideally, your rotor should be big. I've actually made this work with this little rotor, which is uh, much lighter, 50, 50 grams. And uh, but it had a crooked shaft, and so the vibration was horrible. So it would only balance for a little while at a time. Um, let's see. So you want to use a uh, to get more torque. You want to use. There's two ways to increase your torque. You can have a larger rotor, heavier rotor, and or you can increase the speed. The problem with increasing speed is uh, uh, higher speeds, uh, vibration uh, starts coming into play, and then when you've got this in your shaft, I mean when you've got this in your frame, uh, vibration can just be so bad that it's just not going to work. i repeat myself a little bit here. Uh, I can't seem to stay in the camera's frame. Anyway. Um, So you put this, I put this, I put this in here, one of these holes here, like so, and it just sets in a little depression down here. And it needs to be free moving, it needs to be relatively uh, straight up and down. And uh, Uh, free moving it can't be it can't be bind in here so these holes have to be a little this hole up here on the top has to be a little uh, quite a bit larger in, in my case it's a loose fit loose fit not a real loose fit but it can't be any friction there uh, or it's not going to balance now you notice here uh, my rotor which is 150 grams sticks way out here so you need to yeah, ideally get the, the center of gravity of this of the gyroscope back under here in the middle of the frame. Uh, if you notice when mine is running balancing it's at an angle. It's back like this and it, that requires more torque. So if you put this the center of gravity back here it's going to take less torque to keep this thing balanced. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, when it is balancing, uh, you'll notice that it's going, moving back and forth a little bit like this. And this is going back and forth like this. And so what is happening is as it falls, it forces the gyroscope to go this way. And when it goes this way, that produces a counter movement and it self-corrects itself. So it's going back and forth like this. All right. Um, 
Now, if you have a high angular momentum, if you if you have a lot of torque, uh, which you can achieve with a larger, heavier rotor and or a higher RPM, then you're going to see less movement and less movement this way. And uh, if you get a lot of torque and it's well balanced, this thing should just be pretty rock steady and you can push it and it'll just pop back. Mine is right at the edge, so it's always just almost falling over. Uh, and because it's sloppily made, it's got too much vibration. And uh, so if I can make it balance with my really sloppy craftsmanship, somebody uh, that's a good craftsman could really make a well balancing machine. And that's all there is to it just a motor, a rotor, and a, f a gimbal, a frame. And uh, I hope you'll try to make one. It's amazing the first time you get the thing balancing just to see it work. What you can use it for, not too much in its present form. It's just kind of a nice demonstration thing. Uh, there are some unanswered questions that could be answered if somebody was so inclined. Uh, some people wonder whether uh, if the gyroscope is closer to the ground it's it's easier to balance or more difficult than if it's high like this. In my opinion it's both the same because the, the gyroscope reacts instantaneously to any change. It's not like having a ruler in your hand and or a long roll pole in your hand and if it's a long pole, it takes longer to fall, so you have time to get your hand under it to correct it. Here, it instantaneously reacts to any fall. So I don't think it matters whether you've got one inch or you've got uh, a foot like this one. It's going to be about the same. Uh, but that's my opinion. Don't know if that's true and don't have any math to back that up. Um, there's some other interesting things. Uh, uh, about friction here. You could probably put some ball bearings in here, but I've done that before and it seems like if this is not allowed to move a little bit, uh, it tends to fall over and makes it very difficult to balance. So I don't know if it's required that there's a little play in this hole here. And uh, I guess I'll investigate that myself a little bit more. But anyway, I uh, hope somebody builds one out there and, and has as much fun as I've had with it. Goodbye.